Hi, trust everyone are doing well and welcome to our next lesson and we continue from the previous one from the one-to-one -one relationships in Eloquent and this one is a little bit different we could have one-to-many relationship now the sentence reads a little bit different now a user has many houses and the houses belongs to the user now this has many the reason why I structured it like this is for the relationships in Eloquent, especially the one to win, one to many one, as we got a user has many, okay, and it belongs to the user. So the user here is the parent, and the houses is the child of the user. All right. So how do we define a one to many relationship in our models? So if we go to our user model, all right. Underneath right here, we just type in uh, public function and now we refer to the houses. As you remember before, we typed in house when it was one to one. Now we need to make it plural to indicate it is a belongs to many. All right, has many. All right, so we're just going to put in here has many. All right, and then basically. We're just going to return this as many, okay? And then obviously we put in the house class right here, okay? Now, now the thing about foreign keys, as I explained before, the eloquent will look now in the users and the houses database for the user ID because what it does is it underscores basically the method name inside our house. So if we define the relationship here, or belongs to, okay. So in our house, we're just going to do like this, a user, okay. The user basically belongs to, okay. And then return this belongs to the user class. So basically what Eloquent does, it looks at the parent uh, method name and it basically underscores it with whatever method name it is, as we explained before in the one-to-one -one relationship. Now basically what will happen is it will underscore the user with the ID. All right. So let's say this was uh, like we used before. If it was post, it will basically underscore it with post ID. All right, but since we're using the convention, Laravel will automatically look basically in our house database, houses database, and actually just looking for the user ID in there. All right, so if you, let's say you defined it as something else, you will basically, let's say you have the owner ID in here, you have to specify the owner ID. So let's quickly set up the foreign key in our database, otherwise this won't make any sense. All right, so in our database schema right here, obviously you will have other details as well, like your address and things like that, and street name and town and all that kind of stuff, but we're not gonna fill that in, we're just gonna do the foreign key constraints. In order to do that, you're gonna do table, all right, and you're gonna do foreign ID, and you're gonna do, put in your user ID. Okay, and that is going to be constrained to the users, users table, and on delete, I'm just going to do on delete, uh, cascade. Obviously, you can do update as well. Okay, so on update as well, you can actually include it in here on update. Let me just put it in cascade. All right. Now, the thing is, if you put in your owner ID, okay? So, if that is your key that you want to use, all right, then you have to define it in your relationship right here. Owner ID. All right. So, you have to define it in there. Okay. So, if you do that, if you stick to the convention, you don't have to add any foreign keys right there. So, we can leave it to the user one. Now the thing is with a belongs to relationship right here in the belongs to. 
All right. Now, let's say you decided that the user ID field can be nullable. Right now, if you want to put a nullable constraints on foreign IDs like this, don't put it behind the constraint right here, nullable here. Don't put it in there. You will get an. It will actually just not work at all. All right. So you have to put the nullable before the constraint. All right. Now let's say you put, uh, you put your field as nullable, so the user ID can be null. All right. So the house cannot actually belong to a user it can actually belong to nobody but now the thing is in a belongs to right here you can actually do a with default method in there all right with belongs to so you can decide if this field is empty what will be the default value all right and in this case you can put either john doe or whatever uh, or you can say guest owner or whatever the case may be all right so if you put the fields nullable for whatever reason you know sometimes you have to design it like like that because sometimes a harvest will be empty and there will be no owner okay or something like that whatever the case may be in our case there's houses that doesn't have owners um, they're still waiting to be sold or whatever the case may be all right, so then you put with a default value, and the default value can either be the property owner or the construction owner or whoever it might be. All right, so with a belongs to, you can do that. There's other properties as has one, the, which we're probably going to discuss uh, in two videos from now. Has one, you can, uh, not has one through, basically. S1 through is the same thing. You can assign a default value. And all right, so it's has one. And the other one is morph. Morph one. Okay, so all these and obviously the belongs to included. They, they can be assigned a default value. Where basically, if the user or whatever field is empty all right now let's say this was a post all right so let's say this was a post okay so you can obviously assign it with the default value if it belongs somewhere but in our case we're just gonna stick to this i don't want to confuse you guys okay so this basically will return this belongs to the user class with default value of john doe all right so we can do that if you if your field is nullable because if we add the constraint right here, there's going to be an error to say that that field cannot be null. All right. So basically the user ID, because we didn't make it nullable. All right. So it's all good. Now, the thing is, what you can do now is if you, let's say we call in post. All right. In a post. Just let's say find the first one. Find the one with the ID of one. And just get me. Um, I'm looking for the post again. For the house. Okay, just find me uh, the user. Okay, we can do that or we can do the inverse relationship as well. So, let me just instead of post, we can just do house or user. Let me just do user. And this one can be house. So, we can just find the user the first one and just give me the, the user's house All right so because we did it like this to set up the relationships we can actually call on the relationships as methods All right so we can call it as if it is a property or method inside the house model and inside our user model right there okay so obviously there's more to do it like this uh, more ways to actually find your uh, some extra information about it but for now we just want to keep it simple and basic right so that's basically how you set up a one to many relationship just remember in your user model so if it's one to many just make it plural instead of singular so you will have uh, houses instead of just a single house because it has many all right and by default that will we'll look for the user ID inside your schema on your database 
for the user ID. So if you make this author ID or owner ID or whatever the case may be, just make sure that you reference it here as well. All right. And other thing is if your primary key is something else, as your primary ID key is owner ID, just make sure that you mention it here because let's say we have a protected protected primary key that equals to owner ID. I like to use double quotes so convention. All right, so owner ID. So if your primary key is the owner ID, just make sure you mention it as the third parameter in your in your uh, relationship right here. Okay, just make sure of that. And on your house one as well. So if it's like that, just change it in here as well. So in this case, is the user ID is the default in our database foreign key, and our local key is basically the owner ID right here. All right, so basically what Laravel does is it underscores your pattern model method name right there with an ID, but not in the method, just in here. It just like automatically assumes it in here. All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like. Um, if you didn't like the video, please give it a dislike. And yes, and the next one, we're going to do a uh, many to many relationships in Eloquent. All right. And yes. Uh, please give us some comment on constructive feedback or negative feedback or positive feedback is always appreciated. Thank you guys and see you in the next one. Goodbye.